Hi, today I'm going to do an update on all the super investors that I like to follow. I think it is pretty awesome that we can see what the best investors in the world are investing in. So if you are looking for investing ideas, I'll go through the best ones for this quarter. And I'll also give you my thoughts on what I think is the best opportunity from the information. So stick around for that. Now, a lot of super investors that I follow didn't make any moves this quarter. For example, Guy Spear did nothing. And that was the same for a handful of other investors. But normally I would be interested in what Guy Spear in his Aquamarine fund have been investing in. But let's start with probably my favorite investor and authors, Manish Pabrai. Okay, so this is the big news out of all the quarterly reports. Manish Pabrai made an investment to Alibaba, which you probably know by now. This follows Charlie Munger at the Daily Journal, who did the same thing. Now, it is no secret that Manish Pabrai and Charlie Munger catch up with each other quite often, as they are friends. So I can only imagine how interesting the conversation was between Charlie and Monish during Q1 as they both made investments into Alibaba. Now I've analyzed Alibaba before and I think the financials are really impressive. The downside is limited and potentially could return 20% plus from here on out. I am a little surprised that Monish made this investment as I thought that he had moved away from large cap companies and was focused on finding companies under $500 million that had long runways and lots of growth and they would potentially 100 baggers. Maybe this investment was made in January before he really developed his new investing philosophy. Look, I have no idea. Regardless, Alibaba is now a company we all have to take seriously and think about as a good investment opportunity. When Charlie Munger and Monish Pabrai invest in the same company and the price is probably right now even cheaper, well, that is a big tick of approval and a good opportunity for us. So Alibaba is probably not gonna be a 100 bagger just because it's so big already at $100 billion. Yeah, the growth has been fantastic and the growth will probably continue on for the next five or 10 years. But look, a 100 bagger, I don't think so. For those of you who don't know, Michael Burry is famous for being based on the Christian Bale character in the movie, The Big Short. He is a contrarian investor making often strange moves that more often than not turn out to be genius. Now, Michael Burry had a lot of action in the quarter, a lot of buys and sells. And here are what I think are the most interesting in my opinion. He bought a big stake in a company called Zyme Works, which is a Canadian based biopharmaceutical company working on treatments for cancer. Well, I had a little look into this company and this will be near impossible for my little brain to understand, but it's a small company and Barry obviously knows something. Then he also made an investment in a company called CVS Health Corp, which is another health sector investment. This time it's a very large cap company at over $100 billion. Two very different investments, but both in the health space. The next industry that Barry made investments into was energy and shipping. The one that caught my eye was a stake into oil tanker company, Scorpio Tankers. Scorpio was one of the oil tanker companies I had looked at in detail in the past, but I chose other oil tanker companies. I guess Burry has a similar thesis on the oil tanker industry, and I think most of the oil tanker companies are going to do really well when that cycle turns. He went for Scorpio, I've gone for DHT and Euronav and some others. I don't think it's gonna to matter too much. And finally, he made a leverage short bet on the 20 year US Treasury bond market. This is an aggressive move in my opinion. I guess he is confident that the 20 year US Treasury bonds are going to go down. Look, I have no idea what he is doing here. If anyone has a thought on this, that would be really interesting. This is totally not my style of investing and I don't agree with this strategy at all. And I wouldn't encourage anyone else to do this unless you are slightly crazy like Barry. Now, before I get into Warren Buffett, for those who want the safest brokerage account for buying shares in many different countries, I have a link to Interactive Brokers in my description where you will get a free Interactive Broker stock. I think it's up to about $200 just for signing up and using the platform. Look, this is just far, far better than something like Robinhood or Webull or anything else like that because Interactive Brokers have decades of experience, a strong balance sheet, and they're an extremely solid trusted business. I think it is unwise to risk all your money in a startup like Robinhood or the, some of those other apps. I think it could be really problematic and you don't need that extra risk when you're investing. Interactive brokers also serve most people throughout the world. So if you're in Germany, Japan, Spain, Ukraine, whatever, you can get an account. I personally have an account with them as well. 
Okay, no introduction for Warren Buffett needed here. The major move here is pretty much selling completely out of Wells Fargo. This has been happening for a while now, but it was once a big part of the portfolio and a long time investment of Berkshire. So not much confidence anymore in Wells Fargo. Now I think Seth Klarman is somewhere between Michael Burry and Warren Buffett on the scale of investors. Definitely a contrarian, but not to the same extent as Burry. He wrote the book called Margin of Safety, therefore he obviously likes to find undervalued companies. Now he has added more to his biggest investment in Intel and also made a big addition into Google, which is probably the biggest move. Now something I saw that was interesting was he actually sold down a bit of his eBay stake. It's still his third largest position, but it's not as big as it once was. David Tepper has been running Appaloosa for 28 years now, returning about 16% per annum. That is a very impressive record over a long period of time. One new investment that I noticed was a company called PaySafe. I don't know this company, but I then saw Daniel Loeb at third point also made a big investment into PaySafe in the quarter. So PaySafe, well, that might be something that we need to take a look at. Now, I haven't covered Robert Vinal or Vinal in these videos before, but I think he is a fantastic investor, someone I am now following each quarter. His philosophy is, Investing like an owner in businesses run by an engaged and rational owner with the capital of investors who think like an owner. And I really like this simple investment portfolio stock. Now his portfolio is concentrated, so a new purchase is a big deal. And Robert invested into Salesforce during Q1. So I'll now take a look at Salesforce and see what I think. I'm not sure if Alibaba is a new position this quarter or he has had that for a while now, but Alibaba looks like it's now a large part of his portfolio as well. So another new investment I'm following, that is Pat Dorsey, and his philosophy aligns nicely with what I'm looking for as well. So the philosophy is, we believe that the value of competitive advantage is maximized when a business can reinvest capital at a high incremental rate of return for an extended period of time. As such, we seek to own minority stakes in businesses that have substantial opportunities for reinvestment in addition to sustainable competitive advantages. Now, the big investment from Pat is a big addition into a company called Smartsheet. I don't know this company, but Pat Dorsey has high conviction in this idea, so it is worth taking a look at. So I'll take a look into PaySafe, Salesforce, and Smartsheet, but the biggest idea has to be Alibaba. When Charlie Munger makes only one investment in 10 years and it's Alibaba, then Monish Pabrai does the same thing, well, we just have to take notice of this. I took another look and thought that Alibaba would give fantastic returns at a price of about 180, 190, something around there. At $210, I don't get the margin of safety that I really want, but maybe I don't need the margin of safety when Charlie and Monish are my margin of safety. I think I prefer to spend my money into smaller cap companies, but I might start selling put options into Alibaba if the price falls even further. I might as well make some money while I wait for a price that I would feel more comfortable with. Now, I hope this gives you some ideas for your own portfolio. It is super interesting to see what the best are doing. And I get a lot of this information from a website called Data Roma, so check it out for yourself. Now, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my future videos and hit me up in the comments if you have an opinion about any of these investors and what they are up to. Thanks for staying to the end and I'll see you in the next video.